bad for this guy girlfriend now. I think he will do to girlfriend what he do to pork belly. Spank her, tie her up, and dip her in fish sauce. <laughs> that actually sound quite nice. <laughs> Sorry, children. I kind of, I agree with Uncle Roger there. Nani? Chef Ryan Sao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm going to be reacting to Uncle Roger review, Nick DiGiovanni Ramen, Master Chef finalist. This was an episode you guys requested from early on in the channel. I'm finally getting around to it today. I'll be very honest, I wasn't very motivated to get to it because I'm not familiar with Nick, but I keep hearing about it. You guys want it, and I give the people what they want. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And if you've been watching this show and have been thinking about wanting to support further, please consider becoming a patron by visiting the link in the description below. There, it'll take you to my official Patreon page where if you join up, you can take advantage of some awesome perks. And lastly, if you could take a minute to follow me on Instagram at Chef Brian Sow, that would be greatly appreciated. And you know what? Do it. Do it now. Make sure you do it now. And with that out of the way, let's react to some shit. So many niece and nephew asking Uncle Roger to review Nick Di Giovanni making ramen. Apparently, uh, a lot of people have been requesting it from uh, Uncle Roger as well. Very interesting. I'm very curious to see what Nick does because, after all, he is a Master Chef finalist. So. He must know what he's doing. This guy Howard graduate, master chef finalist, and has the smoothest baby face out there for you. Let's see how he do. Harvard graduate, kudos to him, man. I know so many of you have asked for ramen for so, so long. So today, we're making tonkatsu ramen. Tonkatsu ramen. What he say? What he say? Tonkatsu so today, ramen. we're making tonkatsu ramen. Tonkatsu. Nephew Nick, I think you mean tonkotsu. In Japanese, ton mean pork, kotsu mean bone. So tonkotsu ramen makes sense. It pork bone ramen. Damn. Dropping the knowledge. Katsu refers to a fried cutlet. And you know what? Not even I caught that. Level of extreme level of detail from Uncle Roger. Thanks for catching that, because I would have made a jackass out of myself. So tonkatsu mean fried piece of pork. That completely different thing. Say it properly. Tonkatsu, tonkatsu. I've already started a couple things. So for now, let's pop back to yesterday when I hadn't shaved yet, and we'll go to an Asian market. So we've just pulled up to this. This is him with Starbo. <laughs> Uncle Roger can grow better beard than you. Hi. Some unique and awesome ingredients here. So the first things we're gonna grab is a bunch of pork bones and chicken bones for that really flavorful stock. Pork bone, huh? chicken bone, correct. But nephew Nick, iron your shirt. <laughs> Hiya. It feels like negative eight million degrees in here. I'm frigid. Oh, you should join Team Auntie Helen. She frigid also. Well, we got the pork belly, so <laughs> let's get home and make some ramen. He is wielding that eggplant very proudly. Should be proud, man. Be proud of that eggplant. Gotta find a place to put this for the drive. Ugh. We're not off to a good start here. <laughs> Nephew Nick, apologize to the children. Hi. I'm gonna start making that amazing ramen broth. First, I'm gonna go in with all my chicken wings. Next, I'm gonna start taking these pork hocks that we got from the Asian grocery store. Pork hock? As you can see here, there is some meat on the outsides there, but you've got a nice big chunk of bone in there with tons of flavor. No, 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 pork hock, too much meat on there. You should be using pork bone, not pork hock. If you make tonkotsu broth with hock, you're gonna have too much meat falling off from broth. Make it dirty. All right, so there is some truth to this. To give you some like technical terminology, generally rule of thumb, at least for Western cookery, when you're referring to stock, you're referring to something that's cooked with bones. When you're cooking broth, you are uh, generally referring to something that's made with meat. However, these two terms are very often uh, interchanged with, with one another. It's very common. Anyway, going back to Nick's ramen broth or ramen soup, whatever you want to call it, I do agree with Uncle Roger. It should definitely be more focused on the bones. I think that is where a lot of the foundation of the flavor comes from. Nothing really wrong, in my opinion, using some hock in there at all, but I would prefer if he had used bones rather than the hock with the meat on it. I'm gonna go ahead and add my last bit of protein in there, which are duck wings. Duck wing? Nobody use duck wings. 
Darkwing mm. for Tonkotsu. Okay. Some Hi, uh, we use pork <laughs> bone and maybe yes. chicken bone, but I think Nephew Nick want to kill all the animal. Why don't you put elephant <laughs> wing in there also? Okay, so, you know, Nick is taking some liberties with this. I don't think, unless he's making like a duck ramen of some sort specifically. I don't think the duck really will contribute much. Now hear me out. If he was in a situation where he was working at a restaurant where they have duck on the menu and they have the wingtip segments left over from butchering duck because it's already on your menu and you decided to throw it in there, let's, again, just an example, then sure, throw it in there. Don't waste those duck wingtips. But if you are making a tonkatsu ramen broth then I don't really agree with that. Nice, cold, and crisp water. Then crank up the heat and bring this okay. to a nice rolling boil. Niece and nephew, screenshot this image and send to your vegan fan because this <laughs> is vegan's worst nightmare. They see that even dead animal have more company than them. Uh, I do want to mention a couple things I want to come back to. Number, uh, number one, Nick mentioned he's using cold water. That is actually a correct move. When you start with cold water with cold bones and everything kind of slowly comes up to temp, it really helps remove all the impurities and blood from the center of the meat to like extract out versus if you went with hot water and then you would make the outside of the protein coagulate uh, you wouldn't get as much extraction again of the blood and the impurities from the bone and you know these wings and all that stuff i should also mention i i mentioned earlier about meat is for broth and bones is for stock and you know he's clearly using the uh, wings the the whole wings with the meat and all to me that's okay i do i, I do want to mention though i think the wing tips together with just pure po pork bone would have definitely have been the better route. To come to a rolling boil, clear off some of the scum that begins to form on the top. Some people will tell you to rinse this all the way out, but I like to keep all the flavor that's still in there from the bone. So I don't like to rinse it out. No, 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 you have to rinse out. Otherwise your puff gonna be so dirty. Hi, uh, yeah. look at your water. Look at your water. It's so pink already yeah. because there's so much scum in animal bone. It look bad, but it also tastes weird. You need to soak water overnight, throw water away, clean the bone, and start over with fresh water. The process that Uncle Roger really is talking about, he didn't mention anything about heat, but you know, maybe that's not common for a, a proper Japanese preparation of ramen broth. Basically what he's referring to is blanching. And again, that's what I mentioned about you take your bones and or your meat, whatever you're making, you start it cold, you bring it to a boil, it extracts the blood and the impurities, and then you drain that out, you get rid of all that scum, you get rid of that cloudy water, and you start again. By taking it from cold and bringing it up to boil, you're not, you know, it, it happens fast and you're not extracting a lot of flavor from it. You're, you're again, removing the bad stuff. And it's that long cooking process is where you really extract the flavor from. But again, to get a nice clean product, you do want to blanch, rinse, and then start your broth. Just predict nephew Nick broth gonna be so dirty. Let's see if I correct. Now is when we let this go overnight for 12 hours. This is gonna okay. Do all the work 12 hours. Okay. Next, we'll do our chashu pork belly. I mean, that's that's where I, what I mean about the real extraction of the flavor comes from that low and slow cooking. And you know, I, I'm not gonna go back to it, but you saw some onions in there, some spices. Sure. Right, but I'm gonna sous vide it to get it really soft and tender. Ooh, he's sweet pork. Belly. This nephew so fancy. So I'm gonna let this go overnight as well. This pork has been very bad. So we have to tie it up. <laughs> slap your meat like you slap that like and subscribe button. Make sure you do it for Nick's original video. Make sure you do it for Uncle Roger's original video if you haven't already. Ugh. Oh, come on, Uncle Roger. Come on, you keep, you keep pe telling people to slap bags of rice and this guy can't slap his meat. Let the boy slap his meat. He's young, he's got a lot of energy. He wants to slap me. Ew, don't <laughs> spank your dinner. Get room and spank your girlfriend. <laughs> Leave the poor pork alone. For our sous vide, the first thing we'll do is put this finely rolled up pork into a nice large bag. Add four cloves of garlic, a few hunks of ginger. Uh, just want to mention that you saw he tied it up. You know, aside from holding it together, by tying it up in segments, rather than just doing it one on each side, for example, you're actually making the, rolling the protein more evenly so that it actually cooks more evenly. That's why, like, if you see, um, 
if you see some whole roasts, you know, prime rib, they'll generally tie it up. Again, that's to like squeeze the protein so it's, you know, this the thickness stays consistent. And when the thickness is consistent, it's going to cook consistently as well. Green onion, soy sauce. Try to make nice the not bad. Ginger, garlic, scallion, I would say is, you know, a nice little uh, easy acronym to remember. If you want to go in a more Chinese, uh, Asian uh, direction as far as your flavor profiles go. So remember GGS, ginger, garlic, scallion, or ginger, garlic, soy. Just for you guys out there, little tool for you guys to use. One third cup of this extremely pungent fish sauce. Fish sauce, nice a bit weird. Sugar, about a half a cup or so. Then inside the bag, we're gonna massage the heck out of our meat. Stop it. Stop it, hiya. Are you making cooking video or auditioning for bang bows? I feel bad for this guy girlfriend now. I think he will do to girlfriend what he do to pork belly. Spank her, tie her up, and dip her in fish sauce. That actually sound quite nice. <laughs> Sorry, children. Yeah, I kind of, I agree with Uncle Roger there. Nani? I don't think the fish sauce is gonna be bad for this. I mean, that's gonna be a delicious, delicious cha su after it's done cooking. Is it, uh, you know, authentic to uh, ramen? I don't necessarily think so, but I don't hate it either. I think the core of the ingredients he pretty much got down. Hold this up extremely Okay, tight. but at least he marinate the meat. So not like Jamie. Oh God, that boiled pork belly was horrendous. And cook this overnight for about 12 to 15 hours. Okay, it's the next morning. I was tending to that ramen broth throughout the night. Oh really? I thought you would be spanking someone. Now we blew the fuse three times last night. So let's start with our soft boiled eggs. Now that our water's boiling, we're ready to add those eggs. But first, we're gonna add about a tablespoon or two of vinegar, which is actually gonna prevent running of the whites. He said soft boiled eggs, right? So far, it sounds like he's gonna make poached eggs. Generally with poached eggs, in the, the water, you want to put some vinegar. I'll drop in my six eggs, place on a lid, but we're going to do it for okay. six minutes and nine seconds, which I promise you, it sounds silly, but it's the perfect time for a soft boiled egg. Six minute, nine second. Hi, uh, another dirty joke by this guy. I can't believe this guy Weijo, dirtier than my Nigella Lawson Weijo. Here I have a really cold ice bath. Good, good, done, good technique. Straight into the ice bath to halt their cooking. As far as my experience making soft boiled eggs, I, I don't put vinegar in there. I do agree with the timing for a really runny soft boiled egg that it's, you know, about six minutes for me is good, spot on. You know, I don't think the vinegar is necessary. Also, um, the pot he used was big enough. I think he only put three or four in there, so that's totally fine. You do want to put it into the boiling water, just let it cook for six minutes, that's it. And then you wanna shock it in ice water or an ice bath to stop the cooking process so that, because remember, even if you remove something from its heat source, when you're cooking, it will continue to cook. That's called carry over cooking. By shocking it in ice water, you stop the cooking process so that you keep the desired trait you want from your egg. Three quarters cup of mirin, quarter cup Good. soy sauce, dark soy sauce. If you can't find dark soy Ingredient sauce. Ingredient all correct. Now it's time to peel our eggs, but I just wanted to show you guys first how perfect that yolk on the inside. Mm. I told you, oh. it's amazing. Uncle Roger feel like I need shower after watching this video. Drop them right in that soy bath. I'll cover these with plastic wrap and allow them to soak for several hours. Ah, niece and nephew, you see this? If you use plastic wrap like this, the top of egg won't be marinated because it's touching plastic, mm -hmm. not the liquid. It will have one white spot on it. Pro tip, use paper towel. Yep. Like nice. how way of ramen channel do with egg. Thousand percent, couldn't agree more. Next, we're gonna make our tare. It's a ah, really he making tare. This already better than Jamie and Nigella ramen. Tare is the soul of ramen. It's the flavoring for the broth. Mm -hmm. First, we're gonna start with our dashi. Add about three and a half to four cups of water. Three sheets of kombu. And really let this heat up, but we don't wanna boil it. We're actually looking to- Correct. Don't boil kombu. Basically, dashi is this umami packed Japanese soup stock. It's used yep. in so many different things, and this is how we're gonna build the foundation. Bonito flakes, okay. dried shiitake mushrooms. Mm. I'll turn off there the heat and set it aside. Once that incredible dashi is done, we'll strain it into a nice large- Oh, part too fast, some liquid fell out. Don't waste food. 
But now keeping about two cups of our dashi, we'll create our tare by adding one cup of soy sauce. Oh, good. One this tare looked like it got so much sake, umami, so no need MSG. Six cloves of garlic, and then about two tablespoons of black peppercorns. Now we're gonna let okay. our tare, tare not bad. Like now for our ramen. Please do not use dry instant ramen noodles. This is an absolute no-go. Well, if you're making authentic ramen, thousand percent, but there's always a special place in my heart for instant ramen. Don't use packet instant ramen. And also, don't use soba like Jamie Oliver. <laughs> but Uncle Roger, don't recommend niece and nephew make ramen at home. I mean, remember the British pho episode? It's like, oh, you can use whatever noodle you want. No, no, you can't. Ramen, you use ramen noodles. Okay, just buy from store. Support your local Japanese store. Ramen noodles are very different in that they need to be alkalinated. That's Correct. It's just a fancy way of saying that we put baking soda in the dough. But another small correction. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, but ramen, you need sodium carbonate. Yeah, uh, I, what episode was it? I said, I actually said sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda uh, and what Uncle Roger said here is absolutely correct. So I stand corrected. You guys actually pointed that out. Which episode was that? I don't remember, but uh, spot on by Uncle Roger. Good shit. See, I've been doing this for 18 years and I'm still learning stuff. So chemistry. Switch on that spaghetti head and then you're ready to roll. I have to say, it looked pretty good. These look absolutely fantastic. Get it with a nice spray of bread flour, just so nothing sticks. Now our ramen is ready to be cooked. Right here is our 20... Disgusting! Why this ramen broth look like this? This look like roadkill. Tonkotsu <laughs> broth not supposed to look like dirt water. Hi, uh, uh. this what it's supposed to look like. If your ramen broth look like mud, you fucked up. Uncle Roger, right? I predicted earlier his ramen broth gonna be so dirty. He didn't wash his bone, he didn't throw out water, and his bone have too much meat on there. This broth as dirty as nephew Nick brain. No. <laughs> okay. Typically a broth or a stock isn't a very pretty process in general. I'm not shocked by what I saw there, but I do agree that there was a lot of protein on the pork, and that is going to give you a cloudier product, a darker product, which is not exactly desirable for what we're trying to make, or rather what Nick is trying to make here. This broth messier than Auntie Helen and my DeWoss. <laughs> we're gonna strain off all this broth to make it nice and smooth. Even if and you, you strain, you can't strain the out the brown like color. <sighs> Next we have our chashu, which is our Japanese pork belly. What you're looking at here is pork belly that's cooked the entire night, but I just can't help it. I have to spank it. Lastly though, I do want you to look at the meat on the sides there. Soft, perfectly tender pulled pork. Pork belly, it's been a pleasure getting to know you these last 24 hours, but now it's time to cut no, it. No, 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 don't. You have to let the meat rest. I can tell the meat is not rested. It is way too soft. It is fresh out of the sous vide. You need to pull it out. You need to let it sit. And by letting it sit, it'll cool. It'll kind of shrivel back up and it'll be much easier to cut then. It'll be much more precise cuts as well. I am cringing inside just like Uncle Roger is right now. Not high, uh, it not solid enough. You have to take pork belly out, chew it overnight, and mm. then cut it when it mm -hmm. colder. Uh. First you spank pork belly and then you cut it when it warm. What have pork belly done to deserve this? Although I will admit it's very tempting and very hard not to cut off a little piece for you to eat yourself when it comes out fresh like that because it is absolutely delicious. But Uncle Roger's absolutely correct. Um, you know, I said it should rest. Like he said, let it sit overnight, fully cool, and then cut it. That's actually the way to go about it because again, then you'll get those very pristine and clean cuts from the protein. You warm it up in a little broth or you even sear it on a plancher or something like that. But yeah, I, I totally agree. This was not the time to cut it. It's gonna go all over the place. So let's get a couple of nice slices just right here. See? You know, it's funny. It's almost so soft and tender that I can't really get any slices. But give it what I tell you. What, what I tell I you. <laughs> so that's good enough for me. For a MasterChef finalist, I'm a little surprised that he didn't uh, let the meat at the very least uh, rest a bit before cutting into it. Also, he's cutting fresh into it. You can see all that juice all over the cutting board rather than being in the protein. If you let it 
fully cool, the juice remains in the protein, and then you cut it, then you warm it up, you will have a much juicier end product. If you ate it right now, fresh off the cutting board, yes, it's gonna be juicy too, but remember, you have to prepare the ramen, and then you have to plate it and all that stuff. It just, it would have been a much better pork belly if he let it rest and let it fully cool and then cut it. Pulled off the pork belly's thong. I can get a few more good See, slices. if you but again, chop like inside, this, I'm too tender to do what we're looking for. You just Aye. making cool pork now. This is not char shoe. Yeah. yeah, he was doing really good in that regards. You know, again, didn't necessarily agree with the fish sauce, didn't hate the fish sauce, but the technique was very poor in that regard. Open up those soft boiled eggs. First, let's cross our fingers that we got that color from those eggs. Just to show you a little spot on the top mm. of the egg that was not submerged. See, Uncle Roger predicted this also. We're gonna cut through that egg. Very clean and keeping all that yolk inside. Texture, good. See, Texture, very good. I've clearly gotten some of that soy. Maybe you can submerge a bit more time because you see it brown on outside, white on inside, just like Auntie Hersha. And boy, oh boy, aren't those yolks incredible. Just look at how soft and amazing it is. Now we've reached the final shot where we assemble. Nice. Uh, you know, uh, there's one huge improvement I'm seeing here on this particular ramen video versus British pho episode. Uh, I'm, I'm just talking about noodle soups in general. There was a British pho episode. There was a Rachel Ray. There was the Jamie Oliver ramen that had soba in it. And they all use these super shallow bowls. Thank goodness Nick here is using the proper bowl. It, it's deeper, taller. It's going to insulate the heat because after all, you know, a, a ramen is soup and noodles or soup and ramen. And if it's in a shallow bowl, it's gonna cool way too fast. I'll place in a nice spoonful or two of my tare. That's gonna yeah. tare cool in. Then comes my actual mm. broth. The whole top yeah, layer. Yeah, that's very dark. <laughs> Couldn't agree with Uncle Roger more. Way too dark. And let me say though, um, I have no doubt that it's going to be delicious. But for what he's trying to make here, it is too dark. The tea broth. So it's amazing to finally be able to put it into the bowl. Where are the actual ramen noodles? Those should be placed into this hot broth immediately when they finish. So into this Wait. pot. Those should be placed into this hot broth immediately. You say it should be placed immediately, but then you haven't even prepared ramen to go in. Does the word immediately mean something <laughs> different to you? So basically, uh, Nick did not have his mise en place set up. He should have had the pot with the boiling water ready, bowl ready, the broth nice and hot, the dare, and then when he dunks in, the uh, ramen, then go with the do uh, the tare into the bowl, then the broth, and then by the time you complete all that, your noodles should be ready. You know, no management of mise en place here. Cook the ramen beforehand and everything go in at the same time. Don't cook ramen after you start plating. Yeah. Because when you're cooking ramen, the broth gonna get cold high. Uh, yeah. And once it's boiling over very high heat, I'll toss in our ramen. But it's not boiling, dude. Yeah, you have to, when you are cooking your ramen, your noodles or whatever, boiling water, because if it's not boiling, don't forget the product you put into that water, nine out of 10 times colder or cooler than the water, and it's going to cool the water, and it's gonna take time for that temperature to come back up. Bit poor execution here. Admire how amazing my- mm, Look a bit soft. Yeah, you see? And that's because the water was not at a boil when he put it in. Also, I feel the pot he used was a little too small for the quantity of ramen that he put in there because you want a, for me, it's like just throwing this number out there, like a four to one ratio of water to, you know, the quantity of noodle you're about to cook because the more water that you have at a boil, the less it's going to cool down when you put one quarter of the quantity of the water, it's not going to like cool it down so significantly. It'll come back up to temp. When the noodles go into water that's not at a boil, it's going to sit. The outside of it is going to cook more and saturate more than the center of the noodle. So yes, I agree with Uncle Roger. Just by looking at him work the noodle, I could tell it was way, I'm gonna say way overcooked and uh, mushy, which is not a desirable uh, ramen quality. Put it directly into my ramen that's broth. Soft, and now we're ready soft. for that final plating. So in go our that's enoki so, mushrooms. Wait, even that's so much enoki. It yeah, feels like you're having enoki with side of ramen. 
Then we'll go right in the middle with those gorgeous eggs. Then we have our beautiful pork. Then a nice generous handful of green onions. Okay. And last but not least, some nori that I've actually gotten straight. Nori, weird now, shape. There is one of the most gorgeous <laughs> ramen bowls I've ever seen. Now, before we eat this, I want to paint the pork in a little bit. I want you to see, notice right away that those are two separate bowls of ramen. Either he put more ramen in there, so for video purposes, you can visually see the ramen because the bowl just before this shot the ramen noodle was completely submerged again this is beauty shots so you have to plate differently for beauty shots uh you know i mean that's just fact you, know, you want to be able to see the noodles but when it's served i guarantee you nine out of ten ten times those noodles are going to be submerged more fat and okay then just give it a that fancy torching hiya but torching mm. good but don't touch to your it pork in, next to the yeah. egg. You're gonna cook the egg by accident. Touch it elsewhere. Your house so big, go find some other room to touch your pork. I would have um, torched the, the chashu on a separate tray before it actually went onto the into the bowl. Imagine if this was being served to a customer, you could have had that pork under a salamander, getting it seared while you're putting it together and then by the time the bowl is ready for your chashu, you pull it out of the salamander, you push it on, and you get it out to the customer as hot as possible. So I feel this is a, a bit of poor Nissan Plus management. He's not putting his things in place to put his dish together as efficiently as possible to get the customer the optimal product or the optimal bowl of ramen. Now our ramen is ready to eat. I do want to say that this is one of the most beautiful bowls of ramen I've ever seen. Hmm. Damn, son, strutting your own shit. Jeez. Definitely better than Jamie's ramen, thousand percent. I haven't seen Nigella's ramen yet. I do plan to react to that. Let me know if you want me to fast track that in the comments below. He actually make tare, but mm. nephew Nick Tonkotsu is supposed to be white, creamy, and sexy. Not like brown water. That the biggest mistake he made, but Uncle Roger like how much effort he put in. He making noodle from scratch, that's mm -hmm. not easy. Out of five components of ramen, I think he has at least four. He forgot to make aroma oil. Nephew Nick, next time clean your pork bone. Don't cut pork belly when it's hot and no more spanking in cooking we joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid to grade this out of 10. Last time I did this, uh, the graded out of 10 for the butter chicken episode. I guess I just was feeling very generous that day. I do agree with you guys though. I definitely graded Jamie Oliver's butter chicken a little too high. Just feeling generous that day. For today, Nick DiGiovanni's ramen, one out of 10. I'm gonna give that a six and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a six. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If I said something wrong or you have something to add, you know, I love to learn. I would love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.